What is going on everyone? My name's Boyd and I'm back with some more Age of Mythology. The Titans action spawning in the bottom of the map in the red color playing as Zeus. His name is Shelty. His opponent today in the blue color playing as Thor. His name is Kimo. This is, technically speaking, the semifinals. Now it's the winner's semifinals. I'm gonna explain what that means. But basically, these guys have not lost yet. Uh, and if this was to be a single elimination bracket, it was, this would be round of four. But winners, winners semifinals does mean that the next series of winners will be the winners finals. And then we will have the grand finals and then potentially a bracket reset of the grand finals if the winner in the finals does end up losing there. So there is that. So keep that in the back of your minds. Okay. We've got ourselves Chemo playing Thor. We've got Zeus. I love this matchup. This matchup is like, it's so much fun at the really, really high levels when the map is nice and fair. Um, which this is one of those maps that I feel is really, really fair for Thor because you get this backwater over here. Really, really nice backwater. Lots and lots of fish back here. One, two, three. One, two, three. Uh, what, well, we got three, six, nine. Uh, 9, 15. 15 fish over there. Plus, there's these side fishing spots as well. There's these side fishing spots as well. Scouting is paramount. You need to know that this is here. Um, there's lots of opportunities for Chemo to send his pigs off to the side to, to figure this sort of information out as uh, Shelty does run around with that. Katoska bot's going to be spotting the, uh, the water over here as well. Going to know to move there and, um, and see what's going to happen where that's concerned. Uh, but at the moment... Chemo just playing it safe, getting up that second dock, going to get all those fishing spots out. That's lots and lots of fish on that back position. So technically speaking, even if he does miss the side fish, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, as the question is, what sort of a strategy do you actually go here with back safe fish as, um, as Shelty playing Zeus here? Do you go for the full Athena carnage where you try and rush in, just bum rush the... Uh, the chemo base. Chemo does have a great tower here. He's got a great forest here. Uh, a great tower here to protect on this position as well. In terms of um, safety for chemo, this is as good as it gets uh, for this position. As more fishing ships are going to be coming out. Uh, chemo will know that this does get blocked off over here. So uh, that's a thing where that's concerned as well. As a uh, Shelty, I imagine he's going to send a villager over here to drop this dock, but he still hasn't done so. Normally, the uh, normally the best way to play this one as Zeus is you get yourself seven villagers on wood, or four villagers on food, seven villagers on wood, and then you send the next villager over to drop that next dock. And it looks like that's what um, Shelty's done to some extent, as he is dropping a dock over here, his second dock. Generally, you can only afford two docks, and then you need to put a temple down so you can get the 515 advance time. Uh, or a 4.45 advance time is the other version of that seven villager opening with two docks. Um, so we'll see how things are going to go. Uh, as I I'm really interested in what Chemo is going to do. He hasn't scouted his second fish yet. Let me 100% see what's going on here for Chemo. Yeah, he doesn't know that that second fish is there. The temple is coming up pretty early. I do think you actually need to get the the next house you need to go up to 45 population before you get the temple on water maps otherwise you do end up getting housed from from my uh from my experiences um but maybe the temple will come down and maybe chemo with all the villagers on wood here he's actually managed to make it work uh get that get that um that stuff out is possible as a final fishing ship looks like it's coming down there's one more fishing ship to come out over here as i think Kimo needs to stop that fishing ship there mm. Still no house here for chemo. I mean, he will be able to advance here, so it's not like it's a big problem for him. He just has to cancel that dwarf and uh, and just hit advance here. Even with the uh, the idle villager, this one doesn't matter that much. Yes, he's losing every second here. He's losing one resource, roughly. Um, it's not like he's losing the extra resources that other villagers would have coming out a little bit earlier. So it's not it's not the biggest of deal at this point here. Uh, as we do see Doc coming up over here, more fishing ships coming through for for Shelty. But at the moment, Kimo does have more fishing uh, fishing ships here. Athena, the God of Choice, Frey, the God of Choice. No surprises here. A little bit of a surprise, in all honesty, from Kimo. 
Little bit of a surprise here from Kimo. He's also missed that ox cart for his gold mine here. This is actually really, really bad. Um, lots and lots of idle time here for the villagers to walk back and forth. He could have sent the uh, villagers over to this wood line and shared the ox cart here, reducing that walking time a little bit, but he didn't quite play around that. Another dock coming up. Kimo's still not spotting these fish, this um, side fish over here. At any point, you can throw that dock down and start the fishing ships over there. At any point, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But at this point, Shelty is still, uh, he's still building fishing ships, but he's actually only equal on the fishing um, fishing ship numbers here. As I think immediately we're going to see a purse scene coming through for uh, for Kimo as the dwarves coming over onto this position as well. House coming up here as well. The Valkyrie going to come out. I imagine Shelty's going to auto bolt that. Maybe, maybe not. As the wall segment's coming up around the uh, tower as well. Longhouse is coming down here. As the ox cart finally out, pickaxe, purse scene, more longhouses need to come down. A little bit delayed on that. We don't see any forward base here from Shelty either. He's going for a double military academy to open things up here. A little bit surprised to see that. A little bit dangerous, especially on a water map when you know your opponent's going to be able to pump out a ton of throwing axemen as well. Because all of his economy is going to be on wood, basically. Uh, but purse scene in for Kimo. Do we see the purse scene up for uh, Shelty? Not just yet. Delaying that one. Favoring potentially building more fishing ships here. He will need to put up another dock maybe over on this position as he finds the last little bit of fishing spots there. And we see the hoplites starting to come out for Shelty. Archery range coming down as well there. Alex on this position. We do see the tooth arrows here though. That's a relic you want to be picking up and keeping away from the uh, the, the the Zeus blade because it really benefits those archers, those um, Toxodes quite a bit. See, archery range coming up here for, for Shelty. There is a, a cheeky cheese strategy you can do here from the Thor side of things, which is basically don't build too many units, get a Dwarven Armory, and go straight to the Heroic Age here. Drop a hill fort in your base. Frost the enemy army if it rushes in to try and kill you. Basically here, I, I, I kind of feel like Kimo could have been Heroic Age at 6.30 at this point in the game without building any of these longhouses, but it's a little bit risky to make that happen. As now, Shelty moving across the map. Ready to start putting some pressure up onto, uh, onto Kimo here. But Kimo's got the base nice and sorted. He is playing as defensive as you possibly can here. As we do see the Minotaur starting to push in. But no watchtowers up just yet for Kimo. Lots and lots of wood in the bank. I wouldn't mind seeing like another two military buildings here. As the house is coming up on the back. Leaving that Dwarven Armory. Maybe getting himself some Armory upgrades as well. Watchtowers is going to be coming through. Uh, the wood lines here for Kimo. We haven't talked about that just yet. This is not good. There's no back wood lines here for Kimo. He could sneak off to the corner of the map here and try and chop wood over here if he wants to or over uh, over in this spot because I think there is some wood there as well. Um, but he will, need to, uh, he will need to be very, very careful. He also has this food here. He could pull off the wood line if he wants to gather all that food and, and try and go next age, uh, which is going to be super important. It's vital that Kimo at the very least hits the heroic age before this gold mine expires so that he can frost and get a um and get a second gold mine going otherwise shelty is going to be super super happy bit of a weird killing of the animals there in the main base for chemo he just wants to get that favor i assume raiding cavalry going to be searching around looking for some picks here as well as the army swinging around the top side of the map going to be checking out this tower here with the walls up and the houses up this can be quite difficult to, to rush down for um for, Kim, uh, for Shelty there, but Kimo just about to hit that next stage. I imagine Shelty going to be doing the same thing, getting that armory up. Shelty realizing second gold mine is going to be the play here. Get Heroic Gauge, have access to the Hepaspist and to potentially uh, the Prodromus there. The Toxode is getting taken down. The army going to be getting pulled back to try and deal with this raid for the time being as Shaft Mine on the way. Apollo coming through here as well. Gold mine wise, there's some decent gold mines here. Gold mine over here, gold mine over here, gold mine over here. Uh, but look at the, the, the fishing ship differential is a little bit big now. Six fishing ships advantage for Shelty because he's gone onto the side water. That being said, would Kimo have been able to defend the water over here? Probably not. He probably would have been bum rushed off of that with um with Shelty being able to knock those docks down. No worries. So Kimo not really investing in that water there. Probably actually a good uh, decision after all is said and done. As the army now pushing out, one thing to be super careful about is where you put the hill fort in this matchup. I've made the mistake time and time again of putting it outside of my base on my second gold mine only for it to get bum rushed down. Uh, but 
at this point, this is a fantastic fight here for Kimo to take. He is getting a lot of free kills onto those hoplites there. As the army going to be pulling back, we will see that hill fort coming down immediately here. You'd have to assume for Kimo, as the raiding cavalry searching around town, and are going to be coming up for Shelty here as well. Heavy infantry also coming through for Kimo as he pulls his units back. There's the hill fort. There's the frost giant. Is there still a bolt? I think the bolt was used on the Valkyrie earlier in the game. The army just sitting back here, waiting, watching, dreaming. Does Shelty just rush Mythic Age here? That's the big question. Does Shelty just... Nope, he's going for that Underworld Passage as the Hill Fort coming through. Not up just yet as the medium or heavy infantry has come in. What a play there from Shelty. He dives into that Underworld perfectly there, dodging the Frost. Kimo should have waited for the units to get away from that underworld passage. There should be no counterplay to that. As the, as the hill fort is coming up, there is still a, um, a restoration remaining here. But uh, at, at no point does Shelty really need to make this attack happen. Um, but we are seeing the, uh, the hill fort still coming up. The army going to be popping out over here. The throw and axe going to attempt to take this one down. Restoration is here, so he can use that to try and keep that hill, uh, underworld passage alive. And that is exactly what he's going to be doing there. As the hill fort up here will end up coming up here as the, uh, the army going to push through. There's no more god powers remaining, though, for... Uh, Shelty, there is a forest fire that he could use to try and... Wait, does he have that? No, he doesn't have forest fire. I'm not sure what he used it on. What did he use it on? I've got no idea. I've got no idea what he used forest fire on, but he used forest fire on something. Did I... How did I miss that? Hera now coming through, though, for Shelty. He's on two town centers. He's got all of the good stuff. What? what? Did he use it on a lone tree somewhere? Someone in the chat let me know where the, the forest fire was used because I'm confused. But army pushing through with Kimo getting himself out some Apaspist. Not Apaspist, Huskal. That's going to be a big, big advantage for Kimo. But with um, with Shelty now having one access to Hera, but two access to the Apaspist to deal with those Huskal, this is going to be a big, big difference in the fighting. Um... As Kimo trying to break through this position, but the Odysseus targeting down those units at the back. He needs to get that Odysseus to target down the Frost Giant. He's getting a lot of value on the back. The Heracles over here, not really helping out all too much. Finally coming over, now getting some good damage done onto that Frost Giant there. As the Throwing Axeman will be able to snipe him down, retreating back underneath the, the Hill Fort yet again. As the army going to be retreating into the Underworld Passage, Hera at 60% here. As Kimo still trying to pump out as many units as he possibly can. He will have access to a lot of food to pump out some, um, some Yarls and things like that, but uh, Shelty here, 38 villages, 21 fishing ships, lightning storm coming through. Can only save 10 units inside of this hill fort. Generally, two hill forts down here would not go astray as the army still popping in and out. Now we've got the Hapaspist coming through for Shelty and the Manticore on the front there, still alive and well as the army retreats into that hill fort there. Slowly starting to chip away at this position as well. There's the uh, the Mythic Age coming through. And Shelty now drops the Lightning Storm down. Kimo going to dive into the hill for it, but I mean, he loses. He jumps back out as well. He loses so many villagers here as well, down to 30 villagers as he's pulling away. The army breaking through onto this position. The Ox Guard also gets taken out. This Lightning Storm has done so much damage to Kimo as he's trying to group his army up over here. The Medusa... Helping out on this position as well. Uh, Going to be able to take out some Frost Giants if they potentially come in. Kimo does have himself a lot of food to sell, so he can still get Mythic Age. But 32 Villager Ragnarok, I'm not sure that's going to be enough here at this position. As the uh, Hill Fork going to start getting torn down. We do see the uh, Medusa snipes down a Huskal there as well. As the villagers jump onto this wood line, going to sneak over here onto the wood lines over here as well. There is a potential position up here to grab that gold mine there to boot if he needs to. Forest fire is used on the bottom left of Shelty's base. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. I'm not sure what that forest fire was, but that, uh, probably because it's a weird one. That's why I didn't see it. Third town center now coming up for Shelty there as well.
As the villagers do sneak over here, they do find a gold mine. Throwing Axeman getting some good damage done over here as well. As the Huskar trying to break in onto this position and take out those Toxodes and everything else there. But at this point, with the Manticore here and the Medusa, even though those Throwing Axemen are really strong, they don't actually have themselves 100, 100 Axe just yet. Um, it's actually... It's actually like... It's probably actually a better trade here for Kemo with those Throwing Axemen here. It's actually wild that that's the case. How do you beat Mass Throwing Axemen as Greek? Do you build cavalry ever here? Do you ever build cavalry to... I mean, just to like dodge the units, I guess? Or dodge the axes a little bit? As we do see, Kemo has snuck the gold mine up on this position. He's get... Salt M4 is coming through for Shelty though. Shelty's getting a lot of economy moving forward here. He is controlling the map decently. One little... Uh, one little Pegasus would not go astray. I'm surprised to see Shelty not realizing there's another gold mine over there, considering he's got a gold mine right next to two gold mines actually, right next to his town center over here, plus a gold mine over here as well. So he sees all the golds and he does start moving up into this position as a hill fort gonna be attempting to come up here for Chemo. Chemo pulling away, trying to keep that one alive and well here. As the throwing axe been pulling away. Nice snipe on the Paspis. Bellerophon, though. Bellerophon is the answer. <laughs> the answer to take out these throwing axe is always going to be the Bellerophon. Super, super strong there as the throwing axe are going to be pulling back into the main base there. As the Paspis getting taken down over here. And Chemo in that position does realize he is way too far behind. Ends up tapping out there. Now, this game all came down to that, um, that dodge there on that... Um, on that frost. I think if Chemo just gets a good frost off, he gets a lot of damage done, he kills the underworld, he gets his town center up, he's actually in a completely fine position here to move on. Maybe Shelty is still going to be in a decent position as well to put more pressure on, but uh, but Chemo at least has got a shot here at winning this game. But dodging that frost and reducing all of the damage that comes from that, especially reducing that underworld passage, uh, means life is really, really good. Peltast. Peltast has a good Op option there to take out the um the toxodi how much damage do they get on against toxodi peltast plus 100 percent. it's it's actually better to build toxodis it's actually better to build toxodis than it is to build um peltast because the toxodis have got uh six damage and they've got better um better animation so they hit faster than the uh than the peltast do because the peltast doing exactly the same dps as the Toxodes do, funnily enough. So, yeah, Peltast aren't an option there in the slightest. Um, but well played. Great start here for Shelty. He's going to be happy about this one. Kimo going to have to recompose uh, himself moving into game number two. If you guys enjoyed this game, please consider the follow on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTube, hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next game.